marine, oil, and gas HVAC system design. Interdisciplinary Challenges Marine and offshore HVAC systems are critical for ship and offshore platform design and operation, and they interface with several different disciplines. What is interface? In the context of engineering or technology, an interface refers to the point where different components or subsystems of a larger system come together. Interfaces are essential for ensuring that these subsystems can work together effectively and efficiently, and that they can communicate with each other as needed. 1. Process Marine and offshore HVAC systems are often designed to meet specific process requirements in ship and offshore platform applications. Process engineers work with marine and offshore HVAC engineers to ensure that the HVAC system is designed to provide the necessary temperature and humidity control, ventilation, and air filtration for the process. For example, the HVAC system on an offshore oil platform will have different requirements compared to the HVAC system on a cruise ship. Heat dissipation HVAC systems are often responsible for managing the heat generated by other electrical equipment, such as servers, motors, and transformers. It's important to consider the heat dissipation requirements of these devices when designing the HVAC system. HVAC systems can also generate heat themselves, so it's important to ensure that the HVAC equipment is installed in a way that allows for proper ventilation and heat dissipation. The interface between HVAC and other disciplines is an important consideration in the design and operation of HVAC systems. Below are some of the key areas where HVAC intersects with other disciplines. A. Architecture B. Structural engineering C. Electrical engineering D. Plumbing and fire protection E. Controls and automation F. Environmental Engineering G. Maintenance and Operations Refrigeration Cycle of an Air-Cooled System for Small Ships Refrigeration Cycle of a Water-Cooled System for Large Ships and Offshore Platforms The Condenser is a Shell and Tube, once through type. 2. Electrical Marine and offshore HVAC systems require electrical power to operate, so electrical engineers are often involved in the design and installation of electrical components such as motors, drives, and controls. Electrical engineers also work on the design and installation of backup power systems for critical HVAC equipment. A. Voltage and frequency. The voltage and frequency of the electrical power supply are important considerations for HVAC systems. Most HVAC equipment is designed to operate within a certain voltage range, and if the voltage deviates too far from this range, it can cause damage to the equipment or even result in a safety hazard. Similarly, the frequency of the power supply can affect the performance of certain types of HVAC equipment, such as fans and pumps. Therefore, it's important to ensure that the voltage and frequency of the power supply are compatible with the requirements of the HVAC system. B. HVAC electrical load. The electrical load of the HVAC system is an important consideration when designing the electrical distribution system. HVAC systems can consume a significant amount of power, especially during peak operation, so it's important to ensure that the electrical distribution system can handle this load without becoming overloaded. This may require additional electrical panels, transformers, or other equipment. C. Electrical panel specifications. The electrical panels used to distribute power to the HVAC system should be designed to meet the specific requirements of the HVAC equipment. This may include features such as circuit breakers, surge protection, and power monitoring capabilities. D. Requirement of isolators. Isolators are devices used to isolate electrical equipment from the power supply for maintenance or repair purposes. 
HVAC equipment may require isolators to allow for safe maintenance procedures, and to protect personnel from electrical hazards. E. Normal emergency load distribution for DG sizing. DG sizing refers to the size of the backup generator that, is used to provide electrical power in the event of a power outage. The normal and emergency load distribution, will determine the size of the generator required, as well as the specific requirements for the electrical distribution system. F. Duty Standby Configuration The duty standby configuration, refers to the backup system that is used, in the event of a failure of the primary HVAC system. This backup system may include redundant equipment, such as backup chillers or air handlers, as well as automatic switchover mechanisms that can quickly switch between the primary and backup systems. G. Damper Voltage HVAC systems often use dampers, to control the flow of air or other fluids through the system. The voltage requirements for these dampers will depend on the specific design of the HVAC system. H. Shutdown Philosophy The shutdown philosophy refers, to the procedures that are used to shut down the HVAC system, in the event of an emergency or other situation. This may include automatic shutdown mechanisms, manual shutdown procedures, and protocols for restarting the system after shutdown. 3. Instrumentation The interface between HVAC and instrument I.O., input slash output, involves several considerations related to the integration of the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system with the building's instrumentation and control system. These considerations include a. FNG, fire and gas, philosophy. The FNG philosophy outlines the requirements for fire and gas detection systems in the building. The HVAC system must be integrated with the FNG system to ensure proper ventilation in the event of a fire or gas leak. b. Fire and smoke detectors are critical components of the building's fire safety system. The HVAC system must be integrated with the detectors to ensure proper ventilation and smoke control in the event of a fire. c. Fire dampers, hardwired to FNG panel. Fire dampers are used to control the spread of fire through the building's ductwork. The dampers are typically hardwired, to the FNG panel to ensure they operate automatically in the event of a fire. D. Instrument I.O. Input slash output. The HVAC system may require inputs and outputs from the building's instrumentation, and control system to operate effectively. For example, the HVAC system may need input from temperature and humidity sensors to control the heating and cooling of the building. Typical control and power wiring of a compressor motor. The wiring shows the various controls of a compressor. Typical air conditioned room sensor and control system. Change of line color to red indicates the flow of current. Four, THSE, Technical Health, Safety, and Environmental, THSE, Engineers and Loss Prevention Specialists are involved in the design and operation of marine and offshore HVAC systems to ensure that they meet safety and environmental standards. They work to identify potential hazards associated with marine and offshore HVAC systems and develop strategies to mitigate these risks. 
Here are some examples of marine hazards. A. Extreme weather conditions. Storms, high winds, and heavy seas can create hazardous conditions for marine vessels and personnel, leading to potential risks such as capsizing, collisions, or loss of equipment. B. Waves and currents. Waves and currents can have several effects on the HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, systems of ships. Here are some of the possible impacts. Reduced ventilation efficiency. When a ship encounters rough seas or high winds, the motion of the vessel can cause the air handling units of the HVAC system to function less efficiently. This can result in reduced ventilation rates, which can compromise indoor air quality and create potential health hazards for personnel. Damage to ductwork. The movement of the ship can cause the ductwork of the HVAC system to flex and twist, leading to damage, or even disconnection of the ducts. This can result in reduced airflow and poor ventilation, affecting the overall performance of the HVAC system. Ingress of salt water and debris. Rough seas can result in salt water and debris entering the ventilation ducts, and damaging the HVAC system components. This can result in equipment failure, reduced efficiency, and increased maintenance costs. Inefficient cooling. High ambient temperatures and humidity levels can affect the performance of the HVAC system's cooling components, making it harder to maintain comfortable temperatures in the ship's interior spaces. C. Collision and grounding. Collisions between vessels or with objects, such as rocks or other hazards can cause damage or sinking of the vessel. Grounding, which occurs when a vessel runs aground, can also cause significant damage and pose a risk to the equipments and personnel. D. Chemical and oil spills. Accidental spills of chemicals, oil, or other pollutants can cause environmental damage, harm marine life, and pose risks to human health. E. Fire and explosions can occur on board vessels due to fuel, electrical, or chemical hazards, and pose a significant risk to personnel and the environment. F. Man-made hazards. Human factors such as errors, negligence, or sabotage can also pose risks to marine operations and personnel. 5. Structural. The structural requirements for marine HVAC systems are important considerations in ensuring that the system functions efficiently and safely. A. Corrosion resistance. Marine environments are highly corrosive due to exposure to salt water and other elements. HVAC systems must be designed with materials that can withstand corrosion, and damage caused by salt water and other harsh conditions. The use of corrosion-resistant materials, such as stainless steel, and corrosion-resistant paints are essential, in ensuring the longevity of the HVAC system. B. Vibration resistance. The marine environment is characterized by constant vibrations and movement. The HVAC system must be designed to withstand these vibrations without failure or damage. The use of flexible connections and vibration isolation mounts can help to mitigate the effects of vibration. C. Fire safety. The HVAC system must be designed with fire safety in mind, as a fire on board a vessel can quickly become catastrophic. Fire-resistant materials and insulation should be used in the construction of the HVAC system, and the system should be designed with fire dampers and smoke detectors to prevent the spread of fire. D. Space constraints. Space is limited on board a vessel, and the HVAC system must be designed to fit within the available space, without impeding the vessel's operation or functionality. The HVAC system must also be designed with accessibility in mind, to allow for maintenance and repair. Strength. Marine structures must be designed to withstand the extreme forces of waves, currents, and winds. The structures must be strong enough to resist the bending, twisting, and shearing forces that can be imposed on them by these external forces. F. Fatigue resistance. 
marine structures are subjected to repeated and cyclic loading, which can lead to fatigue failure over time. Therefore, marine structures must be designed with fatigue-resistant materials and construction methods to ensure their durability. 6. Architectural The interface between HVAC and architecture in marine applications, involves several considerations that are unique to the maritime environment. These considerations include 1. AHU room sizes slash plant room sizes 2. Shaft slash riser location and sizes 3. Room ceiling heights 4. Galley, laundry heat dissipation, and air requirement 5. Freezer room details 6. Room layouts 7. Space for maintenance provision and material handling Architects work with marine and offshore HVAC engineers to design ships and offshore platforms with energy-efficient HVAC systems that provide optimal indoor air quality and occupant comfort. Architects can also influence the design of the ship or platform's layout to optimize the performance of the marine and offshore HVAC system. Here are some key points related to architecture in marine HVAC systems. A. Space considerations. Space on marine vessels is typically at a premium, so the HVAC system needs to be designed to fit within the available space. B. Air distribution. The architecture of the HVAC system should ensure that the air distribution system is well designed to ensure efficient and effective air delivery to all parts of the vessel. This may include designing ductwork that is easily accessible for maintenance and cleaning. C. Ventilation requirements. The architecture of the HVAC system should also consider the ventilation requirements for the vessel. This includes ensuring that there is an adequate supply of fresh air and proper exhaust of stale or contaminated air. D. Energy efficiency. The architecture of the HVAC system should be designed to optimize energy efficiency and minimize power consumption. This may include designing the system to take advantage of natural ventilation and passive cooling strategies. E. Noise reduction. The architecture of the HVAC system should consider the impact of noise on the occupants of the vessel and should be designed to minimize noise levels in the occupied spaces. 7. Piping. In marine applications, piping is used to transport fluids and gases throughout the vessel. Here are some key considerations for piping in marine applications. A. Corrosion resistance. Piping in marine applications must be resistant to corrosion from salt water and other harsh environmental factors. This may require the use of specialized materials such as stainless steel or copper nickel alloys. B. Thermal expansion. Piping systems in marine applications are subject to thermal expansion and contraction, due to changes in temperature. This can cause stress on the piping and fittings, so it is important to design the system to accommodate these changes. C. Vibration. Vibration is a common issue in marine applications, due to the movement of the vessel. This can cause stress on the piping and fittings, so it is important to design the system with vibration dampening features. D. Space constraints. Space on marine vessels is often limited, so it is important to design piping systems to fit within the available space. E. Safety considerations. Piping systems in marine applications must meet safety standards and regulations, particularly for systems that transport hazardous materials. This may include the use of double-walled piping or other safety features. F. Maintenance and accessibility. Piping systems in marine applications must be designed to be easily accessible for maintenance and repair. This may include designing the piping to be removable or using quick-release fitting. End of Marine, Oil and Gas HVAC System Design Interdisciplinary Challenges